Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where I am here to talk to you about e-reading once again. I've talked about e-readers and e-reading before, but there have been some changes in the world of e-reading recently. And so I wanted to talk about my current thoughts on this technology, e-readers and e-reading, and their place uh, in our lives as readers, those of us who are dedicated readers. And I've made videos like this before. I think I made one fairly recently uh, where I asked the question, what is actually better, physical books or e-readers? And physical books ended up being better on my last video where I asked that question. But the thing is, the reason books ended up being better had nothing to do with the actual technology of e-readers. I actually like the idea of e-reading a lot and the experience of reading on an e-reader nowadays is great. They're, they're a great technology and they've progressed to the point where like this is Amazon's cheapy Kindle. This is their cheap one, their basic introductory Kindle and you know, it's as a reading experience, you can't see because it's super glowy, but as a, as a reading experience, it's great. This little device, the, just their basic, small, cheap Kindle is a great way to read. And you can, it has all those advantages that e-readers have where you can pack a billion books in here and never run out of things to read and they're super portable, this one in particular, because it's so small. And so I think that a lot of the kinks that e-readers had when they first arrived on the scene, and even when Kindles first showed up, have been pretty much ironed out. If their basic model is this good and works this well, and I don't think there's a problem with the actual technology. The problems with e-reading have to do with other things, which I brought up before. And in the previous video I did, I mentioned some of the issues I had with digital rights management and how Amazon can go into your machine basically and change stuff. You know, they can go to your eBooks and for example, change the covers. I realize, I, I recognize this just Yesterday, actually, this is my copy of the new annotated H.P. Lovecraft by Leslie S. Klinger. This is the first edition. That's the first edition cover. I also bought that as an ebook when it first showed up as an ebook. And yesterday, I realized you can't see it that well because of the glowing screen, but they changed the cover to the new cover when I opened up the ebook version of it. They changed the cover without like a thief in the night. Amazon showed up and changed the cover to the new second edition cover. So is this actually a second edition? Did they actually change the edition? According to, according to the ebook, no, according, according to that, they just changed the cover. Whether that's actually true, I don't know. Here's the thing. They can do that. Another concern I had was well, it had to do with the censorship of certain books recently, recently by uh, Roald Dahl, um, Agatha Christie, and some others. Publishers have decided to change the texts of certain books to take out what they consider offensive references. They're not always offensive. But uh, the, tr the concern I had was a real concern that since Amazon can go in and change the covers and the text of your ebooks that they would go in and replace. If you say you bought some of these books, that they would go in and replace your copies with the new censored copies. That was a danger I foresaw, and it's a danger that has happened. Uh, recently, there was an article in the New York Times called It's Your Content, You're Just Licensing It by Reggie Ugu. Ugu? This came out on April 4th, and in this article, it reports that this has actually happened. In Britain, 
Not in America for some reason, but in Britain, for example, in Matilda, Dolls Matilda, the like Joseph Conrad has vanished, and other changes that were made in that book. Suddenly, if you're if you have this book on your e-reader, that's the version you have, if you're in Britain, apparently. In America, you're all right for the moment. Uh, this has also happened with the Goosebumps books. If you have Goosebumps books, apparently, on Kindle, well, now there are a bunch of changes made in those books as well that have been made, you know, while you were sleeping <laughs> or something. Um, so yeah, that danger is, that's happened. That's, according to the New York Times, that has happened. And that is very, very, very troubling. And this is where the issue comes in. And it's, I've already gone on at length about my feelings about changing the texts of authors who have passed away, or in Stein's case for Goosebumps, hasn't passed away. They just changed his books anyway. This is the issue. It's digital rights management. And a lot of this seems to be driven not so much by Amazon as by the publishers of the books. The problems with e-reading and e-readers, like I said, it has nothing to do with the technology itself, which is really good now. It's, it's the way that it's done. I feel like the disadvantages of e for e-readers is that, or e-reading, first of all, they should be better by now than they are. This is a technology, this is a thing that should be so much better and so much more convenient than it is. You should have every book be available as an e-book. And once you get them, they should be safe from either publishers or Amazon or whoever going in and changing stuff. This is the one thing you can count on with physical books. Once you own this book, like I've got this book, Amazon can't change the cover. It's, it's always going to be this cover. The text will not change, you know. They are yours. Whereas this article from the New York Times points out, if if you have an ebook, that ebook isn't yours. You're just licensing it. You know, you pay your money and to license, to rent a book, as opposed to actually physically owning it. Paper books are safe in that regard. But there but there are so many advantages to ebooks and e-readers. that you can't really entirely ignore them as a reader, or you could, I guess. It's just that those disadvantages are really bad as far as worrying about having your books changed and just have, and, and there's a way apparently that on Amazon you can switch off updates so they, they don't do this. I kind of feel like you shouldn't have to go through the trouble, right? I kind of feel like Updates and changes should only be made with your permission. They should say, hey, do you want an update? You can say yes or no. I kind of feel like that's the way it should be. Apparently, publishers have been doing this for a while. Apparently, they're, one of the reasons is that they'll go in and correct typos and things. I've read this. I've never actually seen an example. With this book, my ebook copy of H.P. Lovecraft, I've noticed with this edition, there are some errors. And so I'm wondering if those have actually been changed in my ebook copy. And so I'm going to read the ebook copy as soon as I'm done with the, re with the book I'm reading now, just to see if there have been any changes like that. Because no matter what it says, you know, maybe they have changed it. Who knows? If they can change the cover, who knows what else they're doing? I think publishers have been so resistant to this change or this technology. You know, publishers, they're in the business of making money. Of course, it's a business. And they don't want anything to undercut their sales of paper books. And 
at least at one time, it looked like ebooks could be a threat to paper books. When the Kindle first started getting going, there were a lot of concerns. That doesn't seem to have panned out. People like physical books, and I think people will continue to like physical books. And I can't see the, the sales of physical books plummeting because of ebooks. And publishers have kind of gone out of their way with newer books to make sure that very often ebooks are more expensive than they should be. They are. I mean, ebooks shouldn't cost that much. Even a, even a new edition of an ebook, because there are no printing costs, there are no shipping costs. You have none, none of that to worry about. Where physical books actually cost money because of that kind of thing to produce. Publishers have gone out of their way to make pricing too high on ebooks. And they've done other things to make ebooks a challenge. Also, one of the disadvantages is that there are still a lot of books that are not available for some reason as ebooks. I mean, if you just go for looking at these new annotated books by Leslie S. Klinger, all his books look like they are available except Dracula. There is no ebook of the new annotated Dracula. This is really why, why isn't there? There's, it's probably, there's probably a good reason, but there are a lot of books like that that just don't exist as ebooks. However, the opposite is actually true also, and in a big way. Now, if you're like me, you like older books. I like older books. And there are a lot of authors whose works are just not in print from traditional publishers. A lot of classic authors are like that. Let's say you are interested in the works of H. Ryder Haggard, the writer who wrote She and King Solomon's Mines. As far as traditional publishing goes, or, you know, like Penguin Classics and other classics reprint houses, you can only get two or three of H. Ryder Haggard's books in, in regular paperback books or print books. But he wrote 60 books, at least. All of them are available in the public domain, and all of them are available to get on Kindle either for free, or you can get a big bundle of them for a couple bucks, or two or three dollars. That's amazing. That's amazing. And there are countless writers like that. H.G. Wells, in the same situation, you'll see only a few of his books in print. He wrote a ton of them. They're all available on Kindle, for cheap, or nothing. Uh, same with so many other writers who wrote and whose work is in the public domain. I mean, that is the huge advantage, I think, of e-readers, is that all of that stuff is available. Now, you can get that stuff in print, but you're going to get print-on-demand copies. And those print-on-demand copies, the text is not going to be any more sound or better than what you're going to get as an ebook version. So you, you might as well get the ebook version because it's either going to be free or super cheap. I, I feel like that is an advantage that ebooks have that is just undeniable. And so the situation we are in with ebooks, you know, I, I was so annoyed with this whole situation of ebooks being, you know, being changed without your consent or knowledge that I actually changed up my entire TBR to a physical TBR and I was done with ebooks because of that. I, I'm on this 500 book challenge where I am up for reading 500 books that I already own before I buy any new ones. A lot of those books were ebooks. I had a huge huge library of ebooks they're huge it's huge it was pointed out to me how stupid this was since i already spent money on this stuff and it's you can't go changing the rules on a challenge after you've started that's true so i've backed away a little bit on that but i feel like with e-readers and e-books e this is something you really really have to keep in mind if you're going to buy a book 
you have to know that this could happen. And the rules can change. Publishers and Amazon seem lately to be a, feeling a lot more free to make these changes because there, there's no way to really police this, you know. There's, because of the licensing agreements, they can do this. And the backlash to this kind of thing has been pretty minimal. Most people aren't readers. Most people don't care. Uh, a lot of readers are just like, ah, whatever. Um, which is encouraging to publishers, you know, and Amazon to go ahead and do this kind of thing. And so this could be something that's just prevalent in the, in the future. This is probably not something that's going to go away. It's something you've always got to keep in mind when you're about to purchase a book. If you really want to own this book and you, and you want a book that cannot be meddled with, you still have to get a print book. You know, it's, it's the only way your book is safe. Because even if there are ways to turn off automatic updates on your Kindle, just that could change. The rules could change. Basically, if your Kindle is not on, e not on airplane mode, if it's connected to wireless at all, they can change your eBooks. And if you wanna get a book or download something from your library onto your Kindle, you have to turn, you have to turn the wireless on. And as soon as that happens, there's access to your library and instantly any changes that have been lurking in the wings will flow into your Kindle and your Kindle books will alter. This is something that's just gonna happen. And so you always have to keep this in mind when using these devices. However, like I said, there's a bunch of books out there that are probably not going to be messed with, mostly public domain books that aren't owned by anybody. All those old public domain books are probably safe because publishers aren't, what's their, what's their advantage to changing that stuff? Nothing, probably. They're only interested in money. That's, that's all they care about. They don't care about, you know, your property or the morality of changing texts by authors who have passed away. Uh, it's, it, it, there's a, they don't care. They just care about money. Amazon, of course, <laughs> is a big evil company that just cares about money, really. So they don't care either. So you really have to watch. That's something you have to watch and, and know. Know that this can happen. Know that the advantages of ebooks and the disadvantages are serious if you're a reader who cares about the text of your books. And I'll shut up now because I've gone on at length. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.